What's up YouTube? This is Carrie from Side Trippin' with Carrie. And today we're gonna do a profile on a guy by the name of uh, Jack Durant, or James Jack Durant, who owned a, a prominent steakhouse restaurant in Phoenix, Arizona that's iconic actually. Uh, the, the name of the place is called Durant's. Uh, we're gonna go take a look at the outside of it. I'll show you some pictures of the inside. Uh, it really is a time capsule. If you ever come to Phoenix, I, I would recommend going there to eat. It's a, it's, a, it's a great place. I haven't been there in a while, uh, but, but it's a very good restaurant. And if you're really into kind of that retro feel, I mean, you, it's like taking a step back in time to the 50s. Uh, but again, we're going to profile Jack Durant, who um, I wish I, you know, I, I don't like speaking ill of the dead, but from all indications, this guy was a first class a-hole. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through this. We'll go and visit, at the end of the video, we'll go and visit his final resting place out at St. Francis Catholic Cemetery. All right, we're right now on the corner of Central Avenue and Virginia Avenue in Phoenix. And across the street on Central is Durant's. You can see the, the sign there. As you can see, it's kind of funny. The, the front, there's a front entrance, but we're gonna go around to the back. Uh, people in the know hardly ever go through this front entrance uh, it's kind of a tradition to go through the back one and I'll tell you a little bit why once we get there but one of the one of the stories that goes into why Jack Durant was known as such an a-hole uh, it's kind of a, a story it's kind of a personal story so down the street let's see if I can get picture of that and I apologize for the wind it's really picked up here but the next major intersection is Central Avenue and Thomas and there's a big building there now uh, it says Banner Health on top of it there, there actually was a law firm in there that I clerked in when I was in law school uh, but anyway I digress before that building was there there was a Bob's Big Boy. And when I was a little kid, so this is like during the early 70s, my dad and my mother would take me there. We would go a lot, you know, like maybe two or three times a month on a Saturday night. And uh, I didn't have any problem with it, man. I love those Bob's Big Boy hamburgers. Those were great. But when we would drive down Central, we would pass Durant's and you know Durant, Durant I mean it looks back then the way it looks right now I mean there's no changes to it really but it's this big pink building with the Durant's with the yellow sign on the top hard to miss right especially you're a six seven year old kid and you're like you know and so I'm we're going up the street and I'm like hey dad how come we never go to this place Durant's and he told me my father told me he said because the owner of the place is a racist and he doesn't like black people. And I'm like, wow, really? And I said, how do you know? Or something words to that effect. And he said, yeah, he, he goes, it's known around town that, that African-American folks, or as he called it back then, black people uh, aren't welcome at his restaurant. And worse than that, he won't even hire black folks to work in the restaurant as waiters or kitchen staff, cooks, what have you. So, that, there, there's part one of why Jack Durant's known as a colossal a-hole. Um, and this weekend, I actually watched a movie, and it's free. You guys, if you have Tubi, if you have like a streaming service, it's, it's free on Tubi, T-U-B-I. And the name of the movie, it's a 2016 movie made here in Phoenix called Durant's Never Closes. And it stars... Tom Sizemore, okay, uh, rest in peace Tom Sizemore, he died a couple, last year I want to say, uh, Tom Sizemore,
Sizemore, man, what a great actor. But uh, that guy had some demons, man, that he could never quite figure out. Uh, and it's a shame, because, man, he was a good actor. And he was great in this film. And even in the film, there was a line where he was talking to one of his ex-wives, trying to convince her to marry him. And he, made, and he said something along the lines of, I don't like black people. I call them N-words or words to that effect. It's interesting about Durant's Never Closes. Uh, kind of had mixed reviews. One review I read talked about how great Tom Sizemore was in it and how the direction was bad. And then another review I read was a complete opposite. It talked about how great the direction was and how Tom Sizemore was like just, you know, uh, going off the walls in his performance, but I liked it. I think it's worth a watch, but I will say this. If you're not in tune or know much about Phoenix's history, you could get lost very easily in this movie. One of the reasons I say that about knowing Phoenix history is, uh, and it also goes into another kind of story about why Jack Durant was known as such a jackass. Um, in the 70s, there was an investigative reporter in Phoenix, worked for the Arizona Republic. His name was Don Bowles. And Don Bowles was working on this story. It's kind of like a mob story uh, involving this real estate developer that was kind of crooked by the name of Kemper Marley. And uh, while he was working on this story, he actually was murdered. He was killed by a car bomb in a hotel parking lot of the Clarendon Hotel, which actually isn't that far from here. Um, and I might do a story on Mr. Bowles, but it's kind of weird in that um, his final resting places seems to be in dispute. I think his, his cremains might be with his family. Uh, but in any event, um, this was a huge story when Don Bowles was murdered. And in the wake of it, Jack Durant was saying, oh yeah, well the guys that pulled off the job, they were at my restaurant hanging out. And I'm like thinking to myself, why would anybody want to lay claim to that? You know, <laughs> that doesn't, it doesn't make you endearing to people, I don't think. So anyways, here is the rear of Durant's. And under that awning is the, is the entrance that most people go to, okay? And you walk, when you go through, you walk right through the kitchen. And Jack Durant said that, you know, he kind of wanted people to see his kitchen. He was proud of it. It was clean. He wanted to see how hard the people were working and, you know, nothing to hide. So I kind of get it. It's kind of a cool deal. And um, again, the food is good. It's still good. Uh, Jack died in, I want to say 1987. Um, I never went there while he was living. Um, matter of fact, I didn't go there until I was, after I became an attorney. Um, Durant's is the kind of place to this day, and ever since it's been open, it's been kind of a place for movers and shakers in Arizona and in Phoenix. Um, one of Jack Durant's best friends was Barry Goldwater, um, who was a senator here, ran for president at one point. Um, and, uh, but I've been there and seen, you know, people in the state legislature, uh, attorney generals, you know, the people at the governor's office, things like that. And it, it happens all the time. You can probably go there on Monday and, and if you knew local politicians and whatnot, you would see them uh, there, or there's a good chance you would see them at Durant's. So after Jack died in 87, his family, I wanna say, um, his family owned it for a time and then they sold it. So I think probably by the time I first went there um, in the, late 90s, early 2000s, it was probably, at, a, at that point, it had probably already been sold.
Okay, we're out here at St. Francis, and uh, I'm just going to pan around, and then we'll go check out uh, Mr. Durant's final resting place. So, Jack Durant actually came to Arizona from Tennessee. He lived for a time, he actually came out here to play semi-professional baseball, or not semi-pro, minor league baseball. Uh, back, we're talking in the 20s, uh, there were several minor leagues in the Southwest. There was uh, a minor league baseball league called the Arizona League, and he played for the Miami Miners because there, believe it or not, there's a Miami, Arizona. It's up in the mountains. It's like a mining town, obviously. Hence the name, Miami Miners. And from all indications was, he was a pretty good ball player. Uh, he met, there was a story in the, in the newspaper when he passed away, kind of an obituary, and one of his friends uh, that knew him from way back was talking and saying that, um, that knew him from his Miami days, Miami, Arizona, uh, that Jack was good friends with the mayor of Miami and they opened up a, like a gambling house slash den in Miami and he made a lot of money doing that. So gave up baseball to gamble essentially. After that, he moved on to Las Vegas and he actually worked at the Flamingo, which at that time was uh, operated by Bugsy Siegel and by a guy with Phoenix ties by the name of Gustav Gus Greenbaum. Greenbaum's story is going to be important for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is I'm going to do a video on him uh, very soon, and um, he's got quite an interesting story. Gus Greenbaum also ties in, and Bugsy Siegel tie into that Durant's Never Closes movie, because there's a sequence in the movie which, if you didn't know the backstory, would probably confuse you. There's a story, it's like, it, it, it's got these elements of kind of artsy fartsy stuff in it, as I call it, where it's almost like a dream sequence, and Jack is out in the desert, and there's a guy who's sitting in a chair and it's you know there are these like plastic flamingos and it's Bugsy Siegel or supposed to be Bugsy Siegel and then there's another scene right around the same time again he's out in the desert and he's talking to a guy who's Gus Greenbaum who tells him yes and you must go to Las Vegas and then a couple and then a couple scenes later they show Gus and his and a woman who looks like his wife with their throats slashed cut and that's indeed what happened in Phoenix in 1958. But again, that's a story for another day. So Jack was in Vegas working at the Flamingo purportedly as a pit boss. And you know, this is in the, this is in the early fifties, late forties, early fifties. So I'm sure he knew Bugsy. I mean, he had to, or Ben Siegel, from what I understand, Bugsy or Ben Siegel did not like to be called Bugsy, and uh, you know he he was a rough customer. So I guess I should just call him Ben Siegel. But anyways, I'm sure he knew him. And uh, after that, uh, Jack moved back to Phoenix and opened up his restaurant. You know, so he must have made some decent money running that gambling house, and or at the time that he was in Vegas, but. Let's go to his final resting spot here. Nineteen oh six to nineteen eighty seven. Jack was eighty one years old when he passed away. And um, again, it's it's kind of interesting in the obituary. Uh, and and uh, you could actually read it on Find a Grave, which I will post. Uh, I'll post a link to his entry on Memorial on Find a Grave. They actually have the obituary that ran in the uh, 
or an article that ran in the newspaper around the time that Jack died. And uh, it kind of flows into what I was saying earlier about the type of fellow this guy was. Uh, one of them was an interview with a cook, with a Mexican-American guy that worked there. And he said, yeah, well, you know, he used a lot of really bad language and basically cursed me out a lot. But, you know, after a while, I more or less kind of learned to ignore him and it wasn't as bad. <laughs> so that's one thing. And then the other guy that I was telling you about who knew him from back when he played baseball and had been friends with him for years goes, oh, man, Jack was such a good guy. Man, he would give you the shirt off his back if he liked you. <laughs> so, so that kind of tells you too. But, you know, it's not all bad news. He was, he was very generous to, um, you know, to to basic to um, some Catholic charities around town and other charities. Uh, there was a line in. Uh, Durant's Never Closes where Tom Sizemore said, and I don't know whether this is apocryphal or not, but he said something about, hey, nobody eats here for free unless you're a ball player or a priest. So, you know, apparently he was good to the, the diocese here, Catholic diocese here in, in Phoenix. So that's going to do it, folks. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a, a video on Gus Greenbaum. That was an interesting story and also another kind of personal connection that I'll tell you about when we get there but uh, let me know what you thought about this video like I said do, do yourself a favor if you've got to have an hour and a half to kill check out uh, check out that movie um, uh, Durant's never closes for free while it's free and uh, tell me what you think or let me know what you think about this video uh, so you know, if you like the video, please give it a like. Leave comments, please. If you like the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm closer to the 500 level mark. So, uh, you know, if, if you don't mind spreading it around to friends that you might think or family members that you might think like the channel, please do so. And we'll see you on the next one, okay? Bye.